Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can consider His Holy Word and learn to do the things that please Him. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. So those of you who are my sisters in Jesus Christ, I have a message for you today from the Lord, and I pray that it blesses you. This channel is not only for Christian women, it is for the glory of Jesus Christ and our God, who has saved us from the darkness. A dear sister wrote to me today, and she asked me whether or not she should continue to have contact with her adult children who are very much in the darkness. So I want to address this question as it often comes up uh, for those of you who are my sisters. So we, of course, understand what God would have us do according to his word, not Sister Abby's opinion. And although my opinion aligns with the word of God because I love Jesus Christ, and I know that you do too, if you're listening to this message, you are seeking the truth also, that we do what the scriptures command and not necessarily what we would think according to our flesh. Hallelujah. So let's consider from the word of God how it is we handle people in our lives who are in the darkness that we care about but they seem to refuse to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the first thing we would understand is that we were once in the darkness ourselves. And the way that God led us out of the darkness varies from person to person. There are some who have come out of the Baptist religion or come out of witchcraft or come out of drug abuse or come out of um, the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons or what have you. So there are many different things that people have come out of and the way that our God led us in mercy out of those things is not the same for everybody. Now I know personally that when I was in the darkness, a, a desperate center covered in my own blood and filth, that the Lord had to clean me up quite a bit before I could understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. I had to be worked on a little bit before I was ready to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so if somebody had come to me with the gospel before I was ready to receive it, I wouldn't have received it. And yet God, in his perfect understanding and wisdom, knew how to prepare my heart much like a farmer tills the land so that the land can receive the seed. So in the scripture, we understand that the seed is the word of God. And when the seed is planted in someone's life, we don't know when that seed is going to break open and bring forth life. We can plant a seed and, and 10 years later, when we're long gone, that person can suddenly remember and understand. And so much like a farmer tilling a field has to have some patience for the moment when the seed brings forth life and also how it grows. So, you know, a seedling doesn't bring forth, you know, a massive amount of fruit. A seedling is a seedling. It's got to grow. And even those who are, those of us who are mothers, we understand that a baby needs to be fed first with milk and then with little bits of food. We don't take a baby and open their mouth and cram a steak in there. It will cause that baby to choke. And so it is that we who are Christian women would diligently attend to our heart and know that patience brings forth fruit. It is with patience that fruit is brought forth in our lives. And so we cultivate in our own heart an attitude of long-suffering to the sinners in our lives. You see, 
we are Christians, and Jesus Christ said in his word that we are the light of the world. So if we go to Matthew, and of course in Matthew, when the Lord was speaking, he was speaking to the people of Israel. But now that we're in the time of the new covenant, he's also speaking unto us. And we can read what he says about what it is we do with people who are in the darkness. He says in Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 14, he says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So when we are in the light, we don't have to be afraid of the darkness. The darkness is not going to contaminate us or overcome us as long as we abide in the perfect and holy truth of God's word. There's one way to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, even as he commanded and said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There is no other way to abide in the light than to abide in the holy word of God. And if we're doing that, we don't need to fear the darkness. The darkness isn't going to contaminate us or overcome us. In John chapter 17, we read, and I, I do hope you're turning with me in your Holy Bible because of a truth. If I'm reading the scripture to you, that's good if you're hearing it, but it's better if you're reading it for yourself. It just gets in more deeply, my sisters, when we open the word of God and read it for ourselves. So in John 17, there's a prayer that Jesus Christ prayed, and it's a wonderful, beautiful prayer that I urge you to read because it will truly bless your heart. So Jesus Christ was praying to his Father and our Father, if we're a Christian, and to his God and our God. And one of the things that he said, we read now in verse 14. He said, I have given them, so he's talking about his disciples, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So we can expect resistance, my sisters. We can expect to be hated. I would say that a city that is set on a hill is visible to the enemy, and the enemy doesn't like the light, and so the enemy comes against the light and tries to put it out. And so Jesus Christ said, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So the way we know that we are not of the world, my sisters, is that we are abiding in the truth of God's word. And I would say, it's often been said, it's a saying in the world, but if you're not, if you're not receiving flack, you're not over the target. The fact is, is that when we find that we're being opposed or even persecuted or oppressed in some way. That doesn't mean we're doing something wrong and we should fall into dis discouragement. Rather, we would see that that's because we're in the light and it's part of the narrow way. Light is sh sown for the righteous, and those of us who are walking in the light are walking in righteousness, and people who are in the darkness don't like that because it convicts them. And so sometimes we'll be opposed, but that doesn't mean we have to hate the people who are opposing us or, or that we need to be terrified of them. Rather, we would understand that when we're walking with God, it is God who will keep us safe, and it is God that will show us what is right to do in every situation. So Jesus Christ went on to say in verse 15 now, he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So we can be in the light and we can be an example of the mercy and truth of God in this fallen, dark 
world while not partaking of evil. So, of course, if we have family members who are in the darkness, maybe let's just make up a scenario here. Maybe our family members, you know, like to use drugs and smoke pot and and cigarettes and so forth, and their house is full of filth and chaos. Well, does that mean that we have to never spend time with them? No. But if we spend time with them, we wouldn't, you know, be taking drugs and smoking pot and cigarettes, and, and we would be a light to them. So... A Christian is someone who need not be afraid of the darkness. Truly, the darkness is afraid of the light. And as ministers of the gospel of peace, we can't come out of the world. Because if we come out of the world, nobody can see the kingdom. And we are here as ministers of peace, bringing the truth about how to be reconciled unto God to those who are lost in the darkness. And I can testify that when I was in the darkness, I was in such profound darkness that Even in the world, I was considered to be hopeless. So let us remember our own story wherein we were once in the darkness. And if you don't think you were, well, that's a problem. Because salvation comes when we realize that we're hopeless. And if somebody thinks, oh, I wasn't hopeless. I was all good and God chose me because I was so beautiful, you know. Well, that's not the case at all. And so we would humbly remember our own vile condition before, and we would be merciful and kind ministers of the graciousness of God unto those that are yet lost. Hallelujah. So now let's turn to Matthew chapter 5 again, and let's read, starting in verse 43. The Lord said, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. In another gospel, it is written, the same account is written a little differently. It says, Be ye therefore merciful, even as your heavenly Father is merciful. So when we're commanded to be perfect, it doesn't mean that we're so squeaky clean that we can't be a light in the darkness. Rather, it means that we are ministers of the mercy and truth of Jesus Christ. And so when we're in this world, we don't take part in the wickedness, the evil. We refrain from that, but we're not to separate ourselves as if we're so special and so so holy that we can't have anything to do with those who are lost. Verily, I say unto Jesus Christ, sat down with publicans and sinners, and the religious hypocrites hated him for that. You see, they liked it when people were publicans and sinners, because then they could look holier than thou, and they could have control and power. But Jesus Christ, when he came, he said that I come not for the righteous, but to bring sinners to repentance. When we are walking in mercy and truth, my sisters, walking in the light, that can cause someone to see that we have something that is a great treasure. It might take a while for them to see that. Verily I say unto you, the best way to testify unto the lost is by walking after the example of Jesus Christ. 
So let's read in 1 John about that. 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And verily I say unto you, you're not going to know what the commandments of God are if you only get your truth from videos. The way to know the commandments of God and apply them to your life on a daily basis is to daily abide with Jesus and seek his face, seek the face of Almighty God so that he can reveal to you the life, the everlasting life that is in that fountain of living waters, his holy word. You see, Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Verse 4, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So one of the commandments that we just read a few moments ago is to shine our light in this world, to be a city on a hill, to be a candle in the darkness. And we know that a candle, when it is brought into a dark room, it giveth light unto all that are in the house. We understand that Jesus Christ wasn't afraid of the Pharisees and the lawyers and the publicans and the sinners. He sh shined in every situation. And as we who are Christians understand that he is our master and our example, we now shine as lights in the world. Verse 5, but whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. You see, the love of God should be manifest in us. And God is merciful. God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. And in like manner, Jesus Christ, when he came, he let his light shine on the evil and the good. And verily, he triumphed over evil by continuing in the goodness and mercy of God. You see, Jesus Christ wasn't afraid to die because he knew what was before him after he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And so it is that we as God's people learn obedience by the things that we suffer. People are going to be mean to us. They're going to mock us. They're going to ridicule us. They're going to say we're in a cult. They're going to say all kinds of things. But we remember to stay in the light. We don't have to get down in the mud and argue with people. We simply need to tell the truth in a humble and meek manner and know that some will see that in time. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe never. It's not in our hands what the seed of the of God does, but it is our job and our obligation to be a vessel for the seed. And we know that it is written, the seed is the word of God. Hallelujah. Again, in verse 5, 1 John chapter 2, But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, Hereby we know, pardon me, pardon me, hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. You see, if we manifest the love of God in our lives, my sisters, we don't hate 
the ones who are still lost in the darkness. Because Jesus Christ came into the world and suffered and died on the cross while we were yet sinners. And he did that when we were lost in our own filth. I know I was wallowing in my own filth. And yet God in his mercy heard my cry. He heard my cry. So let us not think that just because somebody is in a horrible situation that they can't hear. Verily I say unto you, horrible situations break the heart. And godly sorrow leadeth to repentance. And so when people are broken, that's when the seed can be planted deeply in their heart and bring forth life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we have come out of the darkness, being delivered from the darkness by baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, and we've been filled with the Holy Spirit of God, we need not fear the darkness. And God does not forbid us to be ministers of light, my sisters. So the way that we testify of Jesus Christ is, first of all, by our example. People will see that we've changed. And maybe they might revile us. Maybe they might persecute us. And maybe they'll repent. Because we know that Paul, our brother Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, was a persecutor and a blasphemer. And yet God used him mightily. So we don't know what God is going to do. We are vessels for the seed. And we need not fear the darkness because we serve Almighty God. And we've been saved by the blood of his only begotten Son. And there is no one that can pluck us out of the Father's hand. So we are the light of the world. Let us remember that, my sisters. Now, it is written... And Titus, let's turn to Titus now. Titus chapter 3, starting in verse 8. I'm going to read a passage for you here, and then I'm going to speak about it a little bit. Starting in verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject knowing that he that is such is subverted, and sinneth, being condemned of himself. So this is the word of God, but a lot of people misunderstand it. We are not to go up to people who are in the darkness and say, oh, you're a heretic, I reject you. Rather, we reject contending with them. We avoid getting in, involved in trying to explain the truth to someone who's coming to us with foolish questions. We realize that to engage with someone like that is going to cause us to be all confounded and tangled up in things that are unprofitable and vain, but we continue in what is profitable. So I'm going to read verse 8 again. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. If we turn now to Romans 12. Starting in verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. 
Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, we don't want literal coals of fire to come on anyone's head, although that will happen to those who refuse to obey the Lord Jesus Christ and accept the gift of salvation by obeying his gospel. We don't want literal coals of fire to fall on anyone. Rather, when we're good to people who are doing evil to us, it convicts their conscience. And it shows them that they're in the darkness. And so we patiently continue to shine our light in the darkness and overcome evil with good. How? By doing kindness unto people who are lost. So if our enemy is hungry, we give him something to eat. If he's spiritually hungry, we give him the bread of life. And we watch and we pray and we wait for opportunities when the Lord might cause a change in someone's heart because verily i say unto you until my heart was broken completely i could not hear the word of god and it took a while for me to get cleaned up after that before i was ready even able to understand the gospel of jesus christ so as the farmer that tilleth the field has patience planting the seed, preparing the land, preparing, putting the seed in there, and then waiting for the sun to bring forth life and cause that life to grow. So it is we who are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ have patience. We have patience with those who are around us, even as God in his perfect mercy had patience with us. I pray that this message has been edifying for you, my sisters, those of you who have wondered about these things. We don't say to people in our family, oh, I can't have anything to do with you. We don't do that. Of course not. We go and we see them and we bring good works to them and we shine our light knowing that when we're praying for someone like that, God is not ignoring us. We just need to wait. And what is perfect and holy in his will, will be accomplished. There is no way it will not be accomplished. And we are not in control of that. We are servants of the Holy King, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we wait and we watch and we pray, being diligent to continue in good works that people might see our light and glorify our God, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. I remain here to serve you. Feel free to write to me if you like. My email is always in the description box underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and uplift and edify and bless many. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.